what kind of performance can you expect from a wide variety of GPUs and various different types of configurations on your locally hosted AI services. We're starting on a multi-part video series that is going to review the performance impacts and characteristics of a massive amount of GPUs on rigs that you can build, put in your own house and run your own AI home server off of. We're gonna be exploring this as we go through a wide variety of configurations and I'm gonna to attempt to answer all of your questions that I've seen you guys post, probably one of the most popular questions, what would blank GPU be able to run at? We're going to start this out by testing the 3090 quad setup that we had. We've also added in an additional GPU. This is also going to be played upon by the fact that we have a different uh, amount of VRAM on that GPU. Probably one of the most common questions I've got is, can I mix and match my GPUs? Can I mix and match my generations? And can I mix and match the PCIe bus if it's say a PCIe 3 or a PCIe 4, or if it's a 1X, a 4X, or an 8X, or a 16X, will that have a performance impact on my locally hosted inference AI server? And if you're not familiar with the rig that I built, check the channel history so you can see all the parts, steps, and assembly that I did to get this up and running to create the ultimate home-based AI system. We're gonna start off with the 3060 mismatched with the four 3090s to see what kind of impact mix matching a system has. Eventually, we're gonna get reviews in for all these cards, but I wanted to get just this grouping done for this card cluster because it's already hooked up and I had so many questions, I thought this would be a good video topic. Let me know what you're interested in seeing tested as far as GPUs, arrangements, and LLMs for locally hosting also. We're gonna get the statistics on what kind of tokens per second you can expect from various configurations. And we're gonna look at the impacts of having multiple GPU arrangements on your performance. Let's get started. The first one that we're running here is the Llama 3.170B Instruct Q80. Now hover over because it will give you a, a gigabyte size that is the actual uh, model size that you're going to be using. And if you look at FP16, you can see that's 131. We are using instruct for this, and that is coming in at quant eight here, and that is uh, roughly 70 gigabytes. And then the base level uh, 70 dB is 37. It's important to pay attention to that because we're also going to explore combinations of GPUs that would be able to hit certain ones of these levels. And of course, if you've got a GPU like you laying around already, this may be able to be tossed into a system to push you over that next level to get you up to that next step. However, that is going to come at the expense of some performance, and we're going to go over that performance here shortly. So to start with, we're testing out our four 3090s and our 3060 Ti. You can see those displayed here in NVTOP, and you can see up here that I've got the NVIDIA 3060 Ti added to the slot over there. I'm going to show you the settings also in case you have bought the MZ32 AR0, which I showed you guys how to put together in this video here. And also we are running today in Proxmox and LXC, which I showed you to put together in this video here. You can find those in the channel's history. The first question that I asked is just essentially warm up and the response tokens were 10.12. I asked it then to write a program that would generate fractals. It did this and it generated that in roughly 9.9 .9 tokens per second. So a little bit of a dip there. And then after that, I asked it to tell me a story uh, about a cat in 4,000 words, not characters or spaces, words, theme it like a pirate. So I'm looking here and I can see that we are hitting right about 9.79 .9 tokens per second on that. And so in here, we've got a 3090. 3090, that is actually the 3060 Ti, 3090, 3090, and we do not have a sixth GPU in here at the moment. And our tokens that we got per second on this is 10.12, 10.12, And the third, 9.79, uh, it looks like there on that. Yeah, 
And then we'll take an average of those three and we'll call that what we were able to generate for tokens per second on this. The memory utilization for loading this model in. So first off, one big question a lot of people have had, can I mix GPUs with different VRAM sites? Yes, can I mix different GPUs with different negotiation rates? Well, yes. So if you are at 16, if you are at eight, for inference, it's going to be okay. Now, jumping from generation four to generation three typically has a pretty big performance implication with it. However, we are pretty much doing some pretty low bandwidth communication. If you actually look at the RXTX uh, receive and transmit bits that are being sent and received here, then you're going to see that it's very low for what's actually happening. I'll throw it one more question here just so we can watch along on the GPUs. So you can see the actual utilization of the GPU processing is very low because we have so many GPUs here, but the VRAM that we're utilizing, it is a great proportional representation of that distribution that we've got here. So you can see that we are using roughly about 75% of the available GPU memory on all of the cards. So it does try to do a pretty good job in distributing the amount of uh, utilized uh, RAM that will be available, eight Gibby bytes, and we have 6.166 Gibby bytes occupied. Up here, we've got 24 Gibby bytes and we have 18.56. I ran the same set of tests, but I changed one thing here, and that is we are now using the more uh, moderately sized 37.2 gigabyte variant, and you can see the RAM demand on this is significantly lower. So as a percentage wise, it does appear that uh, we have loaded up about 7.35 gigabytes on the 3060 Ti, whereas each one of the 3090s has about 10 gigabytes loaded up on it. And the results were something that I was not expecting. We appear to have capped out at about 15.31. Now, I've used the Q4 enough times to know that when we take the 3060 Ti out, we should see a performance benefit and increase. So that'll be something fun to test as we remove that and run both of these tests again that we'll document again in this sheet, all of those links in the description below. And one thing that's really nice if you use the MZ32 AR0, uh, which I've got to say, you can actually use the V3 BIOS. I, I was able to. You might not be able to. It might break everything. But I was able to get the V3 BIOS to flash on it. And that gives us, uh, you can have this with the V1 or the V3, an amazing capability inside here to actually adjust. If you go to your advanced settings and your PCIe subsystem, you can actually just disable a, uh, a, a slot here which is uh, pretty freaking cool. Uh, one thing you want to make sure that you pay attention to, though, is that the slots are uh, numbered from the bottom up, which you might be thinking they're numbered from kind of like the top down, but it comes from the bottom of the board up. So that's slot one all the way up to slot seven. And so we are going to be disabling slot five on this. So that is right here. And we will just go to disable. And that takes care of that one. And if I go to save and exit, save changes. Now, you still need to reboot, but this actually saves a lot of uh, not having to physically disconnect everything every single time. In testing, that can save me quite a bit of time, as a matter of fact. So that's easy. We're back. I didn't actually have to unplug the card. And you can see that we have the four 3090s, the kind of typical running configuration that I usually use. We've got the Q8 still running here, and that's going to be the 70 gigabyte version. And we're going to kick it off here and see what kind of performance differences we see without the 3060 Ti included. And we're at 10.39 tokens per second. So let me go ahead and record that on the sheet here. 0.39. And let's see if that changes as we continue asking questions to it. Maintaining about a 25% workload duty cycle on the GPUs, 20-ish gigabytes used. So that means that if I take one of these out, I most likely will not be able to fit enough uh, RAM in otherwise to be able to run this. So let's take a look here. That is 10.3 tokens per second that we got on that response. 10.32 again and 
Now let's switch that down to the Q4. That is 17.45. That's a nice balance that I've seen kind of repeated in uh, particular with the smaller set, the Q4. You do lose some of the uh, accuracy for sure. I've noticed in that. But uh, at the same time, you gain so much speed that it's uh, it's nice. It's nice. 17.45. 17.45. 17.14. Seventeen point three one, seventeen point three three. So now we're going to go ahead and load in just three of the GPUs that may give us enough space, may give us enough space to fit the uh, 70, well, the 69.8 uh, gigabyte file in it. And we're now testing with the Q8 again. This time we've got three GPUs running over here. Let me go ahead and give you an NV top of those three GPUs there. Holy, this testing is taking a really long time. Oh no. Oh no. It looks like it's enough, but this has gotten... This has gotten very slow. Also, that's not what I asked it at all. Ooh, 0.85 tokens a second. It must have hit over to system RAM is all I can think there. Let's take a look at the container. And yep, CPU usage spiked up there. Warm up command here. It seems to be getting <laughs> with me for doing that also, which is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, definitely going down and hitting some of the uh, system itself. So that explains it. It looks like the reserve is 72.1 on this running process. So we are just ever so slightly over to be able to run that in the RAM. So unfortunately for this one, uh, 0.84, uh, I think I actually record this is does not fit. And I'm of the opinion that if you can't run it in VRAM, it's really, it's really painful to run it elsewise. Let's see what the performance is like, though, on the Q4. Oh, it was so close. It was so close. And it didn't look like it was using 100% of the GPU VRAM either. So maybe there's something that you could tweak there. If there is and you know what it is, drop it in the comments below. Olama website for the 70Bs. If you click on tags, you can see that there's quite a bit of additional ones here. And if you're looking for instruction following, which I typically think is a pretty good choice, then it looks like you could go with the Instruct uh, Q6K, which is about 58 gigabytes of size. And that is versus the Q8, which is 75 gigabytes of size. So that probably explains what we just ran into there. Uh, so keep that in mind, but you can also click the tags and that will give you a lot more options for refining down if you want to just eke out just an extra little bit of RAM. And this one looks like it'll have no problem fitting safely into the RAM footprint. So that was surprising. I would not have uh, thought that it was going to happen quite like that. And we're at 18 tokens a second on that, which is right around what I would expect for the Q4 on uh, four GPUs. Uh, but this actually looks like it was a little fa faster. So... We'll try the rest of these questions out and see whether or not we get uh, similar performance impacts. I mean, a program that generates fractals. That's moving along pretty good. Around upper teens, I find myself kind of happy. That's my personal tokens per second uh, cutoff. Let me know what your personal tokens per second cutoff looks like in the comments below. And 17.26 there. And it's shaping up like we have another important takeaway which is you're not going to speed up your inference by throwing necessarily more gpus at your model here so i think that's something to keep in mind is you should just work on if you have a particular model you like 
uh, trying to customize things and get your GPUs there. Or if you're looking for a general all around good all purpose unit like I built, certainly four GPUs with the capability of adding an additional two GPUs does give you quite a bit of cap capacity for being able to do inference. I believe there are some riser cards also that split out the PCIe lanes into like maybe a four by four. Uh, or a 4x4x4x4, four by four by four by four, which could give me four off of each one of those uh, PCIe slots that does support bifurcation. They all support bifurcation on that G on that motherboard. That would actually allow me to run quite a few GPUs off of one system. Entertaining that thought, 17.1. Tell me if I am crazy for thinking that, though. And our final one here is going to be the... Question about writing. Tell me, tell me the words innocence. It actually waited and didn't take its guess early. Smart on it. 17.54. All right. So we have a pretty good series of information here. I'm going to disable the final GPU. We definitely won't be able to fit the instruct, uh, Q8 in that, so I'm not even going to bother with that test, but we will again come back with the uh, dual GPU setup here for, and it'll give us 48 total gigabytes of VRAM. We've got our correct model selected over here, which will easily fit inside there, and we'll give it a warm up command. And that's 17.87 uh, tokens right there. 17.46, 17.42, and 17.67. And so that is actually pretty interesting. You can see that when we had the 3060 Ti in the mix, we definitely took a hit as far as performance by being able to run that. But at the same time, it did give us more VRAM. Now, in a lower GPU count configuration that may have been important to push us just over the edge so we would have been able to run that. For instance, running the 8Q uh, in the 33090, if I had that 13060 extra in there running at the same time, then it may have been able to actually uh, fit enough VRAM in there and run it all at once. So we probably would have ended up somewhere lower than is my guess where we were at, but still in a decent and pretty much fast and acceptable time frame. Now, if we look at the times that we got for tokens per second, maybe sums not the right word here, averaged, uh, we can see that we ranged from 9.9 .9 all the way up to 17.61. And as we got fewer and fewer GPUs in the mix, it gradually increased. So the optimum solution is using as few GPUs as you can to fit it into VRAM. And that's a pretty good takeaway there as well. So we've learned that we can use mixed. We've learned that we can essentially not be limited by the uh, generation of the PCIe slot. We've learned that we also are not limited by the bandwidth. So if it's a X1, a X4, or a X16, X8 also, you're going to probably be fine on that as well because you're not moving very much data along these. That opens up a huge potential, and that is for us to be able to find a PCIe-based bifurcation card and progress to using, if you are just only interested in inference, something like the older generation GPU risers that are standard tried and true. I've got a bunch of those. I've got 60 some of those, I believe. Uh, so we would be able to set up quite a few of those off of just one system. That brings a lot of possibilities. So that's something that let me know in the comments below if you're interested in. Those only operate at 1x and those USB risers are known for being flaky. So I can see that there probably could arise issues, but at the same time, if you're not training data, you don't really have to have full bandwidth. If you are just doing inference, it's not a lot that once it's loaded up in there, you're going to be accessing it's pretty exciting. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned some stuff. I know I've learned some stuff here and we'll be getting into our next foray of cards very shortly here. Everybody have a great one and I will check you guys out next time.